Hey everyone, this is a book summary of a great book from Brian Tracy called No Excuses. Brian was a high school dropout who at the age of 21 was working at a dead-end job. He was up every day at 5 a.m. He would take three buses just to get to work on time. Then he would get home around 7 p.m. Every month he had just enough money to scrape by and pay his bills. After doing this for months and months, he realized that this was his life. And this was all his life was ever going to be unless he did something to change it. No one was going to save him and no one even cared that he was living like this. He realized at that moment that he was the only one who was able to improve the quality of his life. So how did he go from being broken and miserable to a best-selling author and successful businessman? He did what many people do to turn their lives around. He read. He read books on self-development, self-improvement, motivation, and confidence. He read everything he could get his hands on and he spent every bit of extra money he could scrounge up on books. He didn't need a college education to become a success because his college education was right there on his bookshelf. So what can you get from this book? This book covers a lot of areas regarding how to be the best version of yourself. It's a book for anyone who is hungry to be more, have more, and do more. Here are some of the key takeaways from this book. First, eliminating excuses. We all want to be fit and trim, spend more time with our family, make a lot of money, and be successful. And we can all have those things, so why don't we? It's because many of us take a trip to Someday Isle. Someday I'll get in shape. Someday I'll get out of debt. Someday I'll quit this dead-end job. We make excuses such as my life sucks because of my crappy childhood. Or I would be in shape, but I don't have the time. Or I would get the job I want if only I knew the right people. But we eliminate our excuses when we ask ourselves this one question. Is there anyone else who has the same excuse as me, but they are successful? Ask yourself, is there anyone who's had a crappy childhood, but they still managed to be a success? Is there anyone who is busier than you, but they still managed to be in great shape? Is there someone with less experience or less education than you, but they still managed to make more money and have a better job? Of course, there are thousands of examples you can find of people who have the same excuses as you, but they still manage to be a success. This makes us responsible for our life, whether it's good or bad. Even if someone does something bad to you, you are responsible for your reaction. You took the job, you spent the money, and you chose that relationship. You are responsible. Once you realize that you are responsible for your life, then you also realize that you are responsible to improve your life. The second major takeaway in this book is self-discipline. Self-discipline is demanding more of yourself. In society, we rely too much on motivation. Don't get me wrong, motivation is important, but self-discipline is much more powerful. We often need motivation to, for example, go to the gym. And if the motivation isn't there, then we don't go. But self-discipline is doing what you should do, whether you feel like it or not. This is the one key that can change your life. I always assume that successful people are motivated to do everything they should do. But what this book taught me is that successful people often don't want to do the things they know they should do, but they do them anyway whether they feel like it or not. Successful people look into the future to see what kind of person they want to become. Then they come back to the present and decide what they must do right now, today, to become that person. Successful people make a habit of doing the things unsuccessful people don't want to do. Furthermore, it was discovered that unsuccessful people do things that are tension relieving and successful people do things that are goal achieving. Fortunately for us, self-discipline is a habit that can be learned with time and practice. It's like a muscle. It gets stronger as you use it. The third major takeaway in this book is how to be better at your job and get promoted. We all know people at work who are known as hard workers and we all know people who are known as being lazy. It's not a secret. Everyone knows who these people are. So how can you be known as the hardest working person at your company? First, invest the first hour of your day before you get to work in yourself. Review your goals and plan your day. Second, read and learn. Read at least 30 minutes in your chosen field every day. You can do this by listening to audio programs in your car on your way to work or if you walk to work. Third, work all the time you're at work. I know this sounds simple. But most people spend too much time gossiping, wasting time, surfing the net. So if you work all the time you're at work, people will notice. Fourth, talk to the most successful people at your work. Ask them how they plan their day. 
what books they read, what are some of the things that they do that makes them different from everyone else. Fifth, when you're given a task from your boss, do it as quickly and accurately as you can. Then say to him or her, I'm all caught up, I want more responsibility. Keep doing this until you are known as the person your boss can go to when they really want something done quickly and accurately. Some other key parts of the book worth mentioning are the importance of living with integrity. This means you have no difference between your personal life and public persona. Don't be fake. Don't pretend to be busy at work when you're not. You must be real and genuine. Next, the importance of setting goals. If you don't know where you're going, any road can get you there. A person with clear goals and purpose is a mountain. A person with no goals or purpose is a leaf blowing in the wind. Next, apply the 3% rule. Invest 3% of your income on yourself. Spend it on something that makes you learn, grow, and improve. This means you spend 3% of your income on books, seminars, or workshops. Finally, get into the habit of saving 10% of your income. This can be a challenge at first, so for the first month you can just focus on saving 1%, then gradually increase until you get to 10%. You can begin to make saving money a new and positive habit. This is a great book that could add a lot of value to your life. Everything in this book can be learned by changing your habits over time. Remember that bad habits are easy to form, but hard to live with. Good habits are hard to form, but easy to live with. Thanks for listening, and if you would like to hear more book summaries and some of the best self-development books ever written, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.